Hey everybody, YouTubers, world, clients, friends, family. Um, we are here again. Um, today I'm going to cover a couple of interesting things. One's going to be a little tip, basically based around a uh, client that unfortunately has hurt his left shoulder and is stuck at his beautiful little beach property, um, but keen to, to do something. And in my normal optimistic self, I said, hey, you know what, this could be the best thing that could possibly happen to your golf as he's sitting there with six months of no golf because of the sore left shoulder. <laughs> and that will be the, the right-hand only drill, which, um, I mean, if you'd heard his, his right shoulder, I would say, man, left-hand only drill is the one for you. So there you go, internal optimism. Ah, oh, it's done my ankle. Ah, oh, man, learn to hit balls off your knees would be the best thing for you. So There's always a, a light in every dark corner. So um, before I get into that, some other exciting news with... Um, lockdown thing it looks like um, some essential services are going to be um, essential products are going to be available so I'm going to see if I can potentially be able to send you guys some orange whips um, and some other helpful fitness training aids and stuff uh, which would be exciting to to get access to now this um, if you haven't really seen any of the other videos welcome to my humble abode now my home practice facility it's uh Got a very fancy queen mattress <laughs> with a sheet. And then I've used some other bits and pipes there for uh, shots that basically launch anything above 25 degrees. Um, I need my little bit of, of netting there. And uh, as long as I don't hit them thin, there's some concrete down here and a, and a cardboard box down. <laughs> as long as I don't miss and ricochet into the car or fly backwards to the house, I'm fine. Um, if you've got a setup at home, it'd be pretty fun to see what you're doing. Um, but onto this tip anyways, uh, the right hand only thing, it's really, really good for, um, anyone also that struggles with chipping and pitching because the whole idea with it is you learn to create some angles and just maintain them. Um, you also have to do a couple other little things that are really, really good for your golf game. It's not necessarily like most rules. There's like a level one and then a level two and then there's a final level that you could work to, a level three. So we'll cover um, all those levels here. Now, um, bearing in mind that you should probably just start with level one. Uh, so let's get into it. I'll use the orange whip first. I've modified one. I've got the mid-size whip and I've put the, the full-size weight on it. Just to make it a little heavier and change the dynamic balance a little bit, which is pretty good for what I'm trying to do here. Um, obviously just the mid-size whip or any whip or a golf club obviously will work perfectly for this but this is really good for visual demonstration with an orange and a and a white so what is it so what you're trying to do is obviously hold it right hand only your left arm's just chilling out it can be in your pocket in your back it can be hanging there it doesn't really matter and all you're trying to do is get used to having your takeaway and then you'll notice how there's the white there's the orange there's a little wedge of pizza here and all you're trying to do is get used to creating that little angle and then maintaining that angle as you go through. Create and maintain. And as you can see here, the first couple of times I'm doing it, the body's not doing an awful lot, which would be quite a cutty or a fadey action. Um, but just to get used to that wrist action, create an angle, maintain an angle, create an angle, maintain an angle. From down the line, it's gonna look like you've created an angle, maintain an angle. Obviously, like I said, that's quite fadey or quite cutty, which might not be for everybody. <laughs> But there's other little things you can start doing. Once you've just got a feeling for just this basic process of create and maintain, create an angle, maintain an angle, then you can start to be a little bit more precise with your movements. So you can start to go, okay, I'm going to go have this, create this little angle, and I'm going to allow, as I'm creating that angle, I'm going to let my body turn to keep the ball, or say the butt end of the club, it's going to stay looking at my belly button. So we start to have a little bit of body movement with it. Create an angle. Turn my body with it, keep that angle, turn my body with it. So all of a sudden now, I'm starting to have a little match up there where I create a little angle, belly button's turned to face the bottom of the club, and as I come through, the belly button and the belly button and the butt of the club are going to keep going as I maintain my angle. And even when I release it, this is still going to be hanging out together. All right, so create an angle, and then as I go through, everything's working in unison together. So that is pretty much mastering level one. There's two parts to it. Number one, we'll grab a club. Number one part is just getting used to this idea of 
create an angle, maintain it, kind of like as if I was hitting a hammer, just creating a little angle, maintaining it as I drive the nail in. And then once I've got this feeling of just creating the angle, obviously that's quite a, it's not a very effective way to hit a golf ball. <laughs> you need to obviously have that little bit of body rotation matched up with it. And from face on, I've got some plastic aerosol balls here to hit. Because uh, my little shed's over there and <laughs> hitting golf balls at it won't be the best thing in the world. So you create an angle and then just maintain that angle. We'll make some super slow mos in this one too. So you just create the angle, maintain the angle. Oh, that was flush. All right, and then from down the line, we can hit a golf ball. Hopefully, make sure we hit the mattress, Andy. So we create the angle. You can see the clubs outside my hands, as always with me, in it. A little bit of body rotation, and I'm going to pivot through. Create the angle. Maintain the angle. So I'm still going to have that little bit of wedge of pizza post-impact there. Create the angle. Maintain the angle. Still going to have a little wedge of pizza hanging out there, a little angle there. All right, so that's level one. Um, and that's going to take, if you haven't done it before, if you haven't got mastery of it, it's going to take ample amount of time. Um, there's a couple of added extras there that I'd, I'd throw in if you've got the time, which hopefully you do at the moment, um, which can be super beneficial with this, is you can get some awareness of club face. So as you go back, I wouldn't suggest having uh, face rotation, toe up at that point outside my hands because then you have to somehow match in a flip. So anytime you have to try and time up a flip, I'm not really a huge fan of it. Um, less timing is more time to hit it straight. So less timing, you know, you have to time a flip. Good luck with that. I've tried that for too many years, and it's very, very hard to do. So if you can get it to go back and keep that club face matching your spine tilt, basically, if this is your spine tilt, that angle right there is pretty much the same as your club face angle should be at that stage, just outside your hands. So we've got some face tank square. And then guess what? At that point there, ha, that face angle is going to be the same as there. Now warning, that is going to be a very straight shot, which isn't always my favorite thing in the world. But that's going to be a very, 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 very neutral flight. Club outside the hands, body leads, club outside the hands. That's going to pretty much be how you would hit it on a very dead straight ball flight, uh, which isn't always my favorite thing to do. Um, I often love to have a little bit of curvature, whether it be left to right or right to left. But hey, if you're showing a neutral out, the old right hand only, that's step one there. Club face outside, a little bit of angle, a little bit of body pivot. And then from there, everything's going to work together and through. If you have any inconsistencies in swing movement, so if you have any scoop, flinch, lack of body movement, anything wrong, this shows up what's, what the badness is real quick. Why? Because it's taking your physical strength away. Um, anytime you're a player that gets to the top and loves to go at the golf ball, at the ball, this draw will immediately show up all that badness. So it is a phenomenally effective thing. Out of every, I suppose, 10 people that try it, there might be one or two that it's ineffective for, but that means there's eight people that it's really, really effective for. So by all means, get out there and be, like I said, first master, level one. Because if you try and skip level one, you try and skip this, basic super cool perfect pitch action uh, and just try and jump to a full swing or even a half swing doing it man not only are you gonna give up real quick because it's gonna be too damn hard for you it could be dangerous <laughs> so once you've mastered that and let's assume you've put the the 15 or 20 hours of training in to get this down pat and who knows you might say you know what i think i might pitch like this from now on Oh, that's a nice butterfly. Just creating that angle. Yep, cool. Everything's turned with it and pivoting through. And you go, man, that's, that's a bit of me. Actually, I might pitch like that. By all means, you can then pop your left hand on. Obviously, in the case of that client, he can't pop his left hand on because it's buggered. Once you've done that level one movement, you go, 
man, I've got this down pat. It's phenomenal. The next step from there is to go, okay, cool. What happens next positionally? You can get the feeling for the club. At this point here, we'll move the ball a little bit more there. Line it up with the camera a bit better so visuals add up. At this point here, the shaft should be pointed somewhere between your feet and the golf ball. Somewhere in here, I like. Can be at the ball or can be just inside the golf ball. Would be my personal preference, and it's only a preference. So we have a little bit more body rotation, so the belly button and the butt of the club still match up, and this is going to be pointed just inside the golf ball. Face, as always, is not going to have been rotated open because then I'm going to have to try and rotate it closed. Good luck with that. So we're going to get it up nice and square. Body's turned with it. And then from there, we're going to match up again the other side with a half swing. Thumb face on. We'll whack a couple of those. Not too hard. Otherwise, we'll fly them over the shed into the neighbors. That won't be ideal. So we go half this way, just inside the ball. That way. Body's always going to lead, as always. And then we threw. Oh, went over the shed, didn't I? <laughs> Too much club right there, Johnny. That was flush though. So I'll have a go from here. And we'll make sure we uh, hopefully make contact, Andy. Do not miss the mattress. Oh, that's poor language, isn't it? Make sure you hit the mattress, Andy. Yeah, it's better. So we create the angle up in front, pivot through. Oh, well done, guys. So that is level two, getting that down pat. Creating the angle, so we have a half swing. Make sure you let the body turn, because if you just stand there and just go arms, it's a very narrow position. You can hit it from there, but I wouldn't recommend it. We're trying to get good habits going, right? So you got to get it up. Let the body turn with it. Little lead, as always. And then through. Remember, the big thing here is you try and take the learnings from level one, which is create an angle, maintain an angle to a longer. Still got more angle now, don't we? and trying to maintain that angle before it lets go. So as you're striking the golf ball, you've still got some angle. That's the whole idea here. Even if it starts to release, you've still got some angle. You haven't given it that. No. Create the angle. Ooh, through, there we go. Finally got one thin, and we tested out the cardboard. Okay. Let's do one without talking, see if we can do it. Just a half swing. Half back and through. Money. Cool. And then once you've accomplished that, you're a superstar, firstly. <laughs> um, if you can get it going straight. And like I said, it's it's pretty it's surprisingly difficult to do that. It might look easy. Um, like most things, might look easy, but I tell you what, to get a half swing, all on plane, and then a half through and just flush it. That is surprisingly tough. If you can accomplish that, then by all means, have a go at a full swing. Um, if that's not already a full swing for most players with these physical limitations, by all means, you can go ahead and have a full back swing and have a full follow through. <gasps> give it a go. Ah. A little chunky, but we didn't miss it. Pretty petrified. Um, you can go ahead and have full shots like that. If you hit it... Um, if your timing isn't perfect, ah, uh, let's have another try. Come on, then. Flushed it. See, this is tough. Got to try again, though. So yeah, full swings are hard. Clearly, I need to practice this myself. I just stop at half, but third time lucky, mate. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Boom. Now I'm away laughing. Once you can get that feel going, then you can go, this is a 9-iron, you can do it with a 7-iron. I guess you can do it with a driver. I would not suggest doing it with a driver at home. <laughs> You'd want to have a nice big open practice fairway. Oh, there we go. Now we got it. Oh, thank God, I was a bit worried after I popped one over there. <laughs> and then, um, you know, especially for my mate who's sitting there with a bad left shoulder, just hit shots like this as much as you can, you know. Once you've got that feeling, I would suggest pretty much sticking with the half one or the three-quarter one. The full one starts to become 
Yeah, I don't know. Tough. Um, and then by the time you do get used to it and it's engaged and you can do that with ease, if you haven't done it before, I'm thinking it's going to take a good, I don't know, 30 hours of practice, being realistic, um, unless you're some superhuman athlete. And by all means, video yourself doing it. It's quite funny. Um, and then by all means, chuck on, go ahead and chuck the other hand on. And the whole movement will feel very different. And if you just let your lead arm be relaxed, after doing all this work, your lead arm should naturally feel quite relaxed. It will fit in quite nicely with your golf swing. And you won't have any problems. It will all feel quite nice. But that's the right hand only drill. All right? And by all means, if you have an orange whip or whatever, just stand there and get used to that. Even if you only can do level one, it's a great place to start. So there's a little wedge. At, even at setup, there's going to be, should be a little angle there. Increase that angle. Maintain that angle. And then, you know, at this point here, it's going to release. But the big key is trying to get used to creating an angle, maintaining an angle. Creating an angle, maintaining an angle. And the... If you don't use your body, you get to here and you'll be like, ah, ah, ah. you'll feel it. So by all means, let your body pivot with. And if you really let the pivot go, then you can keep this angle. You can maintain a huge angle and keep it forever if you just keep your body turning. So it's a great way to not only get your hands working correctly, to actually get your pivot working in sync with your hands. So it's a wonderful little drill. It's very difficult. Take your time with it. Like I said again, even, you know, saw me trying to hit my first few full ones and uh, dispersion wasn't good, was it? it? took me a good three shots before I could make it feel uh, comfortable again. And I'm pretty good at doing weird shit. So by all means, just start with the little short ones. Master that. That's going to take a fair amount of time and a fair amount of patience. And then once you can do that, then and only then go to the half. And then once you've got bored of that, then try a few full ones. And then even when you're doing the full ones, yeah, be careful. <laughs> all right, that's all from now. I'll let you all know uh, when I get the feedback from the government regarding uh, being able to send some fitness training tools and stuff out there. That'd be great for everybody to get in shape. And um, yeah, let me know if you've got starting to think about some goals that you have for when we do eventually get back out there. Um, I've been working pretty hard on my speed work and um, got some cool stuff to share with that shortly. It's been uh, interesting times, challenging, but I finally picked up probably about second week. So I managed to pick up. I had a little, had a big session last night, made some big gains. So it was pretty exciting. But more about that when I finally get some real results. So stay safe. Look forward to catching up soon. And uh, any questions, please hit me up.